Good evening. Good evening. And welcome to St. Timothy Catholic Church. Parents and godparents, today the good work of the Holy Spirit started in these young people in their baptism is now being strengthened through the sacrament of confirmation. Sponsors, we thank you for walking alongside these candidates during this formative year, and we urge you to continue to walk as disciples of the Lord with these young people. Confirmation candidates, may the spirit of the Lord enliven you to live as courageous missionary disciples for Christ. Our Mass is being celebrated today by Bishop Bruce Lewandowski, assisted by our pastor, Father Juan Vasquez Rubio, Monsignor Richard Murphy, and Deacon Robert Price. To maintain the sanctity and safety of our liturgy, we ask that no pictures be taken during this Mass. Please rise and join in singing Holy Spirit, number 192 in Breaking Bread. The refrain will be sung continuously while cantors sing the verses. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. God loves us, and we know that because God comes to be with us where we are right here and right now, in the word proclaimed, in the body and blood of Christ that we receive from this altar, and in each one of us, God is present, loving us, healing us, forgiving us, and saving us. And in a very special way today, we celebrate God's presence among us through the gifts and power of the Holy Spirit that you will receive in the sacrament of confirmation. Knowing and trusting that God loves us, we remember our sins. 
We ask for pardon, forgiveness, mercy, and peace. Lord Jesus, you sent us the advocate to be our helper and guide. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, through your spirit, we are drawn into closer communion with the Father. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, your spirit bonds us more closely to your church. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us everlasting life. Amen. Almighty and merciful God, that the Holy Spirit, coming near and dwelling graciously within us, may make of us a perfect temple of his glory. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the prophet of the book, reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring glad tidings to the lowly, to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to captives and release to the prisoners, to announce a year of favor from the Lord and a day of vindication by our God, to comfort all who mourn, to place on those who mourn in Zion a diadem instead of ashes to give them oil of gladness in place of mourning, a glorious mantle instead of a listless spirit. You yourselves shall be named priests of the Lord, ministers to our, of our God you shall be called. It will give them recompense faithfully, a lasting covenant I will make with them. Their descendants shall be renowned among the nations and their offspring among the peoples. All who see them shall acknowledge them as a race the Lord has blessed. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Paul came to Ephesus, where he found some disciples. He said to them, Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you became believers? They answered him, We have never even heard that there is a Holy Spirit. He said, How are you baptized? They replied, With the baptism of John. Paul then said, John baptized with the baptism of repentance, telling the people to believe in the one who was to come after him, that is, in Jesus. When they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus, and when Paul laid his hands on them, the Holy Spirit came upon them. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And sisters, the Lord be with you. And your A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, Whoever loves me will keep my word, and my Father will love him, and we will come to him and make our dwelling with him. Whoever does not love me does not keep my words. Yet the word you hear is not mine, but that of the Father who sent me. I have told you this while I am with you. The Advocate, the Holy Spirit, that the Father will send in my name, he will teach you everything and remind you of all that I told you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Reverend Father, the candidates whom I now present to you are completing their preparation for the sacrament of confirmation. They have found strength in God's grace and support in our community's prayer and example. Now they ask that they are be recognized for the progress they have made in their spiritual formation, that they receive the assurance of our blessing and prayers as they, do, as they go forth to celebrate the sacrament with you today as St. Timothy's. Bishop Lewandowski, I present to you this year's confirmation candidates. Candidates, please stand. Is there anybody here this evening, uh, anybody at all, who finds that life is very easy? You don't have a care in the world, not a problem, no stress, no anxiety, not a worry in the world. Is there anybody here? Raise your hand. I want to know who you are. <laughs> Sir, did you just raise your hand? I think I saw your hand go up. Please let's come right up here, sir, quickly. What's your name? Andrew, stand right up here, Andrew. Give Andrew a big round of applause. Andrew, not a problem, not a care in the world, worry-free, right? Isn't this great? Today's your lucky day, Andrew. Do you know why? Because all of us, all of the people here, we're going to give you our problems. He says that's great. He's a willing participant. Ready? So let's give Andrew our problems. What problems do we want to give him? What problems do you... Did you say health care problems? Health problems? Are you feeling a little sick, a little queasy? Get up there. What's your name? 
Huh? Chloe. Chloe is having health problems. Stand on this side of Andrew, please. <laughs> you were very healthy when you got here this afternoon. How are you feeling now? Queasy, she said. A little uh, uh, on the sick side of things. So you got here, you were healthy, and all of a sudden, you might have the flu. Step back. Where's your mask? No, I'm just kidding. So obviously, health has been on our mind a lot, right, for a couple years. And uh, stress and anxiety can make us even feel sicker than we, we possibly are. But health, our, our, our physical health and well-being, our spiritual health and well-being, our mental health and well-being has certainly been on our mind. It's something we're very much concerned about. What other problems might we have? I know you were going to say family problems. You just, I, I saw your mouth. You were saying problems, just like that. What's your name? Anna, get up there. Anna, I had to live with them. And actually, I was, I thought living with them, but then COVID struck. And I had to be with them 24 hours a day, seven days a week, that we couldn't get out of the house. I had to go outside. I had to get away from those people. I said, well, where did you come from? Because <laughs> what we're used to is fasting each other in a meal, a couple hours together. Then we go and do our things. We go to work, school, shopping. We go to sleep. We go play video games. We go outside and cut the grass. And we're not spending time together. And then all of a sudden, COVID hits and boom, lockdown. We're all together. We're like, who are you? Where'd you come from? I didn't know you were like that. Uh, and, well, family stresses and tensions that we have, right? Parents experience that, They're the growing pains of their children. You know, kids want to be on their own independence, start to make their own decisions. Their mom and dad are not ready to let go yet. And all kinds of issues in our families, right? Tensions, concerns, things that stress us and cause us anxiety. And I just heard you say financial problems. <laughs> Did, didn't I just hear you say that? I, I thought you did. You're just taking his wallet out, right? What's your name? Jack. Jack, get up and sit next to, next to Anna and, and Chloe. I got it. So, oh, whoa. Give our, give our financial problems a big round of applause. You came here happy, carefree, not a worry in the world. And all of a sudden, you have health problems, you have family problems, you have financial problems, right, Jack? Financial problems, right? Are you okay? Are you going to make it? Are you feeling the weight of the world on your shoulders? You're seeing a little bit, a little bit stretch. You're okay so far? You're holding up against the problems? If you have money, what happens? You worry about it. If you don't have money, what happens? You worry about it. So it doesn't matter if you have it or don't have it or in between that, how much you have or don't have. We all worry about it. We stress about it. How many people paid more than $4 for gas? Do you believe we are actually doing that? Paying $4.50, $4.60 for gas? Who ever thought? I remember actually, this is going to date myself, I remember when gas was $1.50. <laughs> right? And we thought that was high. Food's expensive. I used to buy a can of Campbell's noodle soup for a buck, 99 cents, and now it's $2.50, at least that's in the city of Baltimore. Price is going up, inflation has us worried. The paycheck, we can't stretch it as far as we want to. Financial worries of all kinds. And, and we look at the bills that we have to pay and all of those necessary payments we need to make in preparation for things like school, health care. It's just a big stress, worry and anxiety. How are you feeling, Andrew, with the weight of the world on your shoulders? And did I hear you say, did you say you have problems? You did? What's your name? Jonah. Jonah has problems, just world problems. The problems of the world, right? Give, give our world problems a big round of applause. What's your name again? Do you know Jack? And do you know Anna and Chloe? You better get to know them, they're all problems. All right, so world problems. What's going on in the Ukraine? What's going on around the world, right? And don't we look around the world and say, oh my gosh, what's going on? And we look around our country. In these last few weeks, if you don't feel stress and tension, you don't feel anxious, that, well, it's probably because you're not watching the news. <laughs> the problems that we're facing in our world today, I don't want to go through the whole list because I don't want to depress us. This is a happy occasion. But the weight of the world is not... Do you know what this reminds me of, Jack? You're Jack. You're Jonah. Anna, Chloe, you are what problem? Healthcare. Family issues. 
financial issues, world problems. You know what this reminds me of, Andrew? Um, when I was about your age, they used to have this <laughs> class called physical education. And what we would do is we would get out a rope like this, and somebody would hold one end, like you're going to hold now, and you're all going to hold this other end, like everybody grab on, get a big hold of that, but you're going to have to step away a little bit, just a little bit, and I'm going to put this in the middle, and we're going to give you a count of three. <laughs> all right, hang on to that rope. No, you're going to need to hang on. Andrew, you're going to need to hang on. On your mark, do you know what this is called, right? Tug of war, right? On your mark, get set. Wait a minute. Are, are you sure you can do this? Are you strong enough to face all of these problems? Do you have the strength? Do you have the fortitude? Do you have everything you need to face all that's going on? Health problems, family problems, financial problems, the problems of the world falling on you. And you know what? This is all of us, really. Isn't it? I, the, he represents, Andrew represents each and every one of us. That, that we look at life and we're facing all these problems and difficulties and sometimes we want to throw our hands up and say, we almost want to give up and say, what, are, what am I doing here? Life wasn't supposed to be like this. I thought it was going to be easier. I thought it was going to be better. I thought I'd be happier. Today we're celebrating the sacrament of confirmation. Today's your lucky day, Andrew. You know why? Because you get the gifts of the Holy Spirit. What are the gifts of the Holy Spirit? Did you say knowledge? You did, didn't you? Get up there and stand next to you. You're going to move in just a little bit. And we're going to put knowledge right next to you. I think you said wisdom, didn't you? Didn't you give wisdom and, and knowledge a big, big round of applause? Did you say understanding? You certainly did. Did you say counsel? And you said piety? And you said holy fear, reverence on God's presence? Get up there, all three of you. Give a big round of applause. Now, you're going you're gonna to need to give them a little bit more of the rope. Keep your hands on that rope, a little bit more of the rope, because we want to make sure everybody's got a hand on that rope. And you need to be like, you need to be like getting in there. Are you ready? Are you sure you're going to be able to do this? You need to like dig in a little bit. They're a little overconfident, the problems are. Knowledge, <laughs> wisdom, fortitude, piety, counsel, understanding. You want to stand down here in a line? We don't want you to fall off that step. Do we have understanding? You look very understanding. Get right up there. Big round of applause for understanding. <laughs> Knowledge. Wisdom. Remember that. Knowledge. Wisdom. Fortitude. Piety. Counsel. Understanding. Holy fear, reverence, and awe in God's presence. Who's going to win in this tug of war now? Who's going to win against the problems? Andrew is, because he's got the Holy Spirit on his side. He's got the Holy Spirit. He's got, he's got everything he needs to live life well, to be successful, to be happy, to not just overcome and conquer the problems, but to live way past them and to be victorious. Victory is his. And that's the same for all of us who receive the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Knowledge, wisdom, fortitude, piety, Counsel, understanding, <laughs> holy fear, reverence on God's presence. The problems can't stand up to the gifts. This is your lucky day, Andrew. And for all of us who have the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Now, you need to know the gifts, right? You really need to know them and know how they work. And why? Because our problems don't go away. There's no such thing as a problem-free life. We're always going to have problems. We're always going to come up against struggles, difficulties, trials, and troubles. But as long as you have the gifts of the Holy Spirit and you know them, knowledge, wisdom, fortitude, piety, counsel, understanding, holy fear, reverence, and awe in God's presence, if you know the gifts and know how they work and know how to put them to good use, the problems are never going to get the best of you. They're never going to work on you in such a way that you would give up, be hopeless, and just surrender to them. That the problems may not disappear, but we have everything we need through the gifts and power of the Holy Spirit to manage them and to live well and, and to live that same victory that Jesus lived in his victory over the cross and over the grave and over sin and over death. Now, if you notice here, we have the gifts of the Holy Spirit where the gifts of the Holy Spirit 
are present, you find a community, a group of people. And so we're never alone in our problems. If we have the gifts, the gifts pull us together as a family of faith. That family of faith, we call it the church. And so we have people to help us, and we'll never be alone. We'll never be by ourselves in our problems. Because where the Holy Spirit is, the church is. Where Jesus is, the church is. Where the church is, there's our family. We're not alone. We're not isolated. We're not cut off. Did you ever notice? Uh, uh, you, you really want to do this, right? On your mark, get set. <laughs> That's not yet. <laughs> Did you ever notice that Jesus in the scriptures, in the gospels, whenever he met somebody, he left them better than he found them? Did you ever notice that? So Jesus comes across ten lepers. Does he leave them with their disease? Even though they're ungrateful, they get healed. He leaves them better than he found them. He heals them. Remember the woman caught in adultery? They're going to stone her to death. They have the stones in hand. They're ready to kill her. And Jesus intervenes. And not only does he save her from being stoned, he saves her soul. He says, go and sin no more. And remember that family, Martha, Mary, and Lazarus? What happened to Lazarus? He died. And Jesus goes to see Martha and Mary to console them. And they say, Jesus, you're late. You should have been here four days ago. Lazarus is already dead. He's in the tomb. And what does he do? Does he leave them in their sadness? No. He says, come with me. They go to the tomb. He says, roll back the stone. Lazarus, come out. And he raises Lazarus from the dead. Wherever you feel sick, wherever you see it feel sinful, whatever is dead in you, the gifts and power of the Holy Spirit bring us to life. Jesus leaves everybody he meets better than he found him. Now, you get the gifts of the Holy Spirit in confirmation. And you're asked, when you get these gifts, to own this faith, to love this faith that we have, not only to own it and love it and live it, but to share it with others and defend it. The challenge of confirmation is this. You're getting the gifts, and you have to continue the mission of Jesus. You have to go and do what Jesus did. And to put it simply, everybody who meets you, you should leave them better off. Happier, healthier, holier, more confident in the love of the Lord, the love that the Lord has for them. On your mark, get set. I can't do that to you. Drop the rope. <laughs> Give a big round of applause. Good job. Thanks. Thanks for being a good sport. Thanks all our problems. Have a seat. Thanks a million for the gift of the Holy Spirit. Have a seat, everybody. In confirmation, you get the gifts. You came here today to meet Jesus through the power of the Holy Spirit. Jesus is going to what? Not leave you as you were. You're going to be better going out that door than when you came in here. And that goes the same for all of us. Because we meet Jesus here in his word, Jesus here in the Eucharist, and Jesus in this love that we share as brothers and sisters in the family of the church, this fraternity of love and care that we live as God's family. We meet Jesus here. And Jesus is not going to leave us as he found us. He's going to strengthen us and encourage us in the living of our faith. And he says to us today, if you have a problem, if you're struggling, if life is just really hard, if you don't know what to do next, knowledge, wisdom, fortitude, piety, counsel, understanding, holy fear, reverence and awe in God's presence. Use the gifts. Know the gifts. Put them to good work. Wear them out. Put them on your cell phone. Be able to read them every day and ask, am I using the gifts? How can I put these gifts to good use? So I'm going to ask the, those to be confirmed to do three things. One is to remember this date is your anniversary of confirmation and celebrate it next year. All right? Celebrate your confirmation anniversary. Mark the date on the calendar. And on this date, tell your parents, call your sponsor, say, hey, let's have a party. I've been really good. Maybe a 5, 15, 25, <laughs> maybe a 50. But on your anniversary next year, ask yourself, am I using the gifts? And if you're not, start using them. Get out a paper, write them down, carry them with you, call on those gifts at every moment. And if you're using the gifts, keep going, keep using them. Use the gifts. God gave them to you, giving, to them, giving them to you. God is giving them to you for your good, for your benefit, so that you can live happy, healthy, holy lives. Second thing I want you to do is you've done service in preparation for the sacrament, you've done volunteer service, you've done a ministry. You did a great job reading. Stand up and take a big round of applause. She did a great job proclaiming. Stand up. Take it in. You did a great job. 
serve. Seek to serve. That shouldn't be the first or last time that you read in church. Get her up there every Sunday, right? She said, oh, no, not every Sunday. <laughs> the idea is what you were doing as preparation for the sacrament, now make that part of your everyday, ordinary Catholic living. Look for opportunities to help. Seek to serve. Volunteer, especially here in church. And if you're not sure what to do, where's, where's Amy? Say to Amy, Amy, I want to help. <laughs> I'm here to volunteer. You could be a peer minister helping those who will be sitting here next year. I'm here to receive the sacrament. Where's our pastor, Father Juan? If you're not sure what to do, say, Father Juan, what do you need help with? Right? Where's our deacon? Right here. As say, what do you need help with? What can I volunteer to do? Do you need an usher? Do you need somebody to clean the church? Are you giving out food to people who are needy? Does somebody need a visit? Can we visit the sick? Look for ways to help. Look for ways to serve. And make service ministry part of your everyday Catholic life. It shouldn't be the exception, it should be the rule. And the final thing is this. Every time you meet Jesus in the Eucharist, he leaves you better off. Don't do anything to separate yourself from him. Receive Jesus in the Blessed Sacrament often, as often as you can, but at least every Sunday. At least every Sunday. And, and why? Because how, how can we live without the body and blood of Christ in this world that's so difficult today. Remember, every time you receive Jesus, Chris, he, what? Leaves you better than he found you. Stronger in faith. Rejoicing in hope. Triumphing, triumphing in love and charity. Candidates for confirmation, please stand. On the day of your baptism, your parents and godparents carried you into church. And on that day, they made on your behalf the profession of faith. We call them baptismal promises. Right now, we're going to ask you to renew your baptism promises. I'm going to ask you a series of questions. And the answer to the question is very simple. I do. As you hear the question, ask yourself, do I really? Do I really love this faith? Do, do I want to live it? Do I want to own it? Make it my own? Do I want to share it with others? Am I willing to defend it? Am I willing to defend this faith that's mine, that I love so much? Do I want to share it with others? Obviously, you do, or you wouldn't be here right now. Your pastor says you're ready. Those who have prepared you for confirmation, your sponsors and parents, they're ready. Today, as you hear the questions asked, Really pray for the strength to live this faith well. To live it in such a way that others will be inspired by you. To live it in such a way that others will want to live it, own it, love it, and share it. Can somebody help me pick up that rope? I'm going to trip and fall. Thank you very much. And so I ask... Do you renounce Satan and all his works and all his empty promises? Do you believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death, was buried, rose again from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father? Do you believe in the Holy Spirit? the Lord, the giver of life, who today through the sacrament of confirmation is given to you in a special way, just as he was given to the apostles on the day of Pentecost? Amen. Do you believe in the holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? Amen. This is our faith. This is the faith of the church. And we are proud to profess it in Christ Jesus, our Lord. And together we say amen. Amen. At this time, we have what's called the imposition or laying on of hands. Nobody will touch you. I'll stand here. Father Juan and Monsignor Murphy will extend our hands out over you. In the sign of blessing and prayer, calling down the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Young people, candidates, open your hearts up now to receive the gifts and power of the Holy Spirit. Pray that the Holy Spirit uh, come into your heart move in you, act in you in new and special and powerful ways. And parents, sponsors, family, friends, invited guests, pray for these young people now. Pray for them like you've never prayed for them before, asking that the Spirit of God take hold of them, helping them to live their faith well.
helping them to live this faith, to own it, as their, to, to possess it as their own, to live it, love it, to share it, and defend it. Dear friends, let us pray to God, the Almighty Father, for these, his adopted sons and daughters, already born again to eternal life in baptism, that he will graciously pour out the Holy Spirit upon them to confirm them with his abundant gifts and through his anointing, conform them more fully to Christ, the Son of God. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who brought these your servants to new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, freeing them from sin. Send upon them, O Lord, the Holy Spirit, the paraclete. Give them the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and fortitude, the spirit of knowledge and piety. Fill them with the spirit of the fear of the Lord. Through Christ our Lord, amen. Please be seated. Maria Goretti, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Therese of Lesseaux, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Andrew the Apostle, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Adela of Normandy, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Albert the Great, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Augustine of Hippo, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Dimpna, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Victoria of Abutina, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. 
Christopher, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Christopher, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Maximilian Colby is sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Angel, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Let us call upon the help of the Holy Spirit to assist our young people in their Christian journey as we offer our petitions. Please respond with, Lord, hear our prayer. For Pope Francis, Archbishop Lori, Bishop Lewandowski, and all bishops, that they may be wise and holy shepherds, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the church, that her leaders and members may reflect Pope Francis's call to embrace the joy of the gospel in our daily lives through an active relationship with the Spirit. We pray to the Lord. 
Lord, hear our prayer. That the Spirit moves leaders of the world to seek peace and justice for all while building a culture of life for all nations. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the newly confirmed, that their lives may be witnesses to the fruits of the Spirit, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For vocations to the priesthood, diaconate, religious life, and lay ministries in the church, especially for our young people today, that they may listen for God's call in their lives, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who have died, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We ask these and all our prayers to our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. As our gifts are prepared, please join in singing the summons, number 385 in Breaking Bread. now, sisters and brothers, that our sacrifice will be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. Receive in your mercy, O Lord, the prayers of your servants, and grant that, being conformed more perfectly to your Son, they may grow steadily in bearing witness to him as they share in the memorial of his redemption by which he gained for us your Holy Spirit, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. And lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. Ascending above all the heavens and sitting at your right hand, he poured out the promised Holy Spirit on your adopted children. Therefore, now and for ages unending, with all the hosts of angels, we sing to you with all our hearts, crying out as we acclaim.
You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. mystery of faith. celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your son and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the blessed Joseph, her spouse, the blessed apostles, the glorious martyrs and Timothy, and with all the saints, and whose constant intercession in your presence we rely on for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, Advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm your faith and charity, your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, William, our Bishop, the other bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned here before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world, to our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life. Give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. divine
divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of Christ. Good job. takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy to be to enter on my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Prayer for Spiritual Communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Please join in singing our communion hymn, Spirit and Grace, number 344 in Breaking Bread.
us pray. Accompany with your blessing from this day forward, O Lord, those who have been anointed with the Holy Spirit and nourished by the sacrament of your Son, so that with all trials overcome, they may gladden your church by their holiness and through their works and their charity, foster her growth in the world. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. I would like to thank the youth ministers and peer ministers who journeyed alongside our newly confirmed young people over the last year. Thank you, Linda, the choir, and all of our liturgical ministers for serving at this liturgy. Our newly confirmed candidates will be processing outside and then directly come back into the church for a group picture in front of the altar. Let's gather outside or in the parish center for pictures because we need to prepare for the next mass. It is cake and punch in the parish center. Thank you also to Zach Lopez and Marisa for coordinating and uh, helping these young people to come close to God through the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Bishop, for being among us and Monsignor. Uh, I want to thank Marissa, I think I called you Amy. <laughs> you look like an Amy that I know, I'm sorry. <laughs> but anyway, thanks for your ministry and all that you do. And a special word of thanks to our pastor, Father Juan. Uh, it's um, tough being a, the only priest in a big community like this. And you do so much, you make so many sacrifices. So thanks for just being a wonderful person. And thanks so much for your priestly ministry. May God continue to bless you. And through you, continue to bless your parish. Thanks for all you do. The Lord be with you. May God the Father Almighty bless you, whom he has made his sons and daughters reborn from water in the Holy Spirit, and may he keep you worthy of his love. Amen. Amen. May his only begotten Son, who promised that the Spirit of truth would abide in the church, bless you and confirm you by his power in the confession of your faith. Amen. May the Holy Spirit, who kindles the fire of charity in the hearts of believers, bless you and lead you blameless and gathered as one into the joys of the kingdom. Amen. May the blessing of Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit descend upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. The Mass has ended. Go and proclaim the good news of Jesus Christ with your lives. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Please join in singing our song of thanksgiving, Now is the Time, number 514 in Breaking Bread. 